Welcome to the DCC Museum. Hi and welcome back at the museum. Today I'm wearing a new shirt received by Jeremy Hyden who does all our fashion. And this shirt, uh, exclusively made by Jeremy Hyden for the DCC Museum, is also available to Patreons. And they come up with crazy solutions. You can order any format, any color. So if you're interested, I'm just mentioning this because based on our last videos, we get a lot of questions about the t-shirts. Today's topic, however, is about batteries. Batteries that we have done several videos of. The first video was about a custom made battery that we had made before we knew how to get the original gum stick batteries. That led to the uh, replacement of the original battery that was another video that we did in the uh, past year. But today's video is about using 21st century technology in any portable DCC player by using an 18650 battery. This battery is 3.7 volts and is originally used to be in um, a flashlight. But with the correct electronics that allows you to charge this battery and do a step up DC DC conversion from 3.7 to 4.8 volts, you will be able to create something really nice. And together with MD Talkman and Philip Delang, we have created STL files that you are able to download on our forum, but will look something similar like these two. This is a battery that holds actually a mechanism so you can click in the 18650 battery and it will charge a Panasonic or a Philips 130 portable. And this is the regular um, battery for a DCC 170-175 model. In this video, we're gonna show you how we came to that result with this team and how you can potentially build your own. The idea came to life when Christoph Zitar pointed out the battery and electronics that are used in external battery phone chargers could be used for the DCC portables. We found the combined electronics for charging and DC to DC conversion and started to play with various test designs for all models of the portable DCC players. It turned out that MD Talkman had similar thoughts and was already fine-tuning the printing process using his 3D printer. We then collaborated on getting two different models using a standard USB port for charging. To save more space, we used two boards to further miniaturize, one for charging and one for DC to DC conversion. The first battery was for the earlier models Philips DCC-130, Panasonic RQDP7 and the Victor ZD-1. This means that the external charger used for these players, and often is missing or broken, is no longer needed. You simply charge it via any USB charger and click it in the player. Because we had room to spare, we came up with the idea of using a spring-loaded mechanism to easily replace or change the 18650 battery. If you go on a longer trip, you would only need one battery case, but could take multiple 18650 batteries with you. The test results were amazing. The original battery would offer up to two hours of playing time, but the new 1816 version would double that, more than four hours. The second battery was for the Philips DCC 134, 170 and 175, as well as the Panasonic RQDR9 and the Morant's PMD601. Because the walls would be too thin, we were not able to use the spring-loaded mechanism in here just yet, and it still has to be soldered in. Charging can be done inside the player like the original battery, but only via external USB. Playback time with the original battery was two and a half hours, but with the new design battery we reached nearly eight hours. The reason for the big difference between the two generation players and their batteries is explained in one of our previous video interviews with T. McKyper. The first generation players were still using the IC infrastructure that was not specifically designed for portables, using more power than later models. We are able to ship any battery to patrons of the DCC Museum. You can reach the DCC Museum for more information. Hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.